all right, candid video again, right? Candid video. Ah, I actually had a video about this in my last 450 deal that I just haven't finished editing. Potentially, just confidence-wise, maybe be a smarter move for him to make up an excuse. So I'm gonna have to take that off because I was saying, dude, Ken Roxon just needs to take a break because mentally finishing back where you don't belong is not healthy, even if you are healthy. So you need to come up with a bullshit excuse to retire early from the series, right? So you leave some speculation for people to wonder and you can then feed off of it later on, essentially. So Ken Roxon has decided to take a break from Supercross. My reaction, I'm not surprised. Absolutely not surprised. I only thought that the reason why he was staying out there was some sort of contract obligation because, truthfully, a rider of his caliber who won A1 knows where he belongs and knows that he can run with these guys, their speed and their pace. He's not a 10th place guy. He's not some guy that's supposed to be getting lapped, right? And does should he come out and say actually what's going on is it something health related they say it's health related and so whether it's mental where he's just not in it to keep pushing or he's scared because that happens guys it happens you get scared of twisting that throttle and it's time to really really give it up right especially after experience is the best teacher his experiences has been a lot of pain and things that have gone terribly wrong where somebody that hasn't experienced that type of deal, you can't compare the two because some dude is just young, dumb, full of cum. The other dude is has some wisdom on his side because of his experiences, right? Yeah, you know, you can argue with me in the comments below. Let's, let's get into it. So truthfully, I want to know, are you guys surprised? Do you think this is a good move for Kenny? Kenny should have done this five rounds ago, to be honest. It's over halfway the series is over with. Uh, I don't even see that he's going to race the outdoor nationals. Um, in my opinion, maybe if he took the last five rounds off, he could probably be ready for the outdoor nationals. But these guys run them ragged. It's such a long series. And now that we're having the potentially the new FIM World Supercross series, and you got MX, there's just so many avenues of just racing all the damn time that there's no resting. There's no resting. People want to talk about PEDs and all sorts of stuff. Well, I can tell you, like, you can't be on that stuff forever. You got to have a, a cycle off to recover. Recovery is huge. It's called hydration. It's called sleep. It's called not doing a, a damn thing. Maybe a small little act of recovery of having your heart rate at like 120 walking around something you know to stimulate the muscles but nothing that's like hard hardcore and riding even in the off season um the the i guess it's mood point at that point because you have your heart rate doing 200 on race day you have your heart rate doing 200 on practice day you're gonna get burnout could this be a scenario of him just being burnout some fatigues on whatever supplements the guy has been on, potentially. I mean, you could speculate so many different things when it comes to a rider of his caliber, but he's not having the results that I want to say he deserves because he's capable of winning races, and he proved it round one. Proved it round one. So, ah, just bummer. And without me digressing anymore, I guess the questions I'm asking is, what do you think? Uh, question number two is, is Honda going to keep him around? Is Chase Sexton now the top guy? Obviously, Chase Sexton is the top guy right now because he's the one doing results. And in this sport, you're only good as your your last race. And it sucks that a dude that has been a past champion in motocross hasn't made it in the 450 class to have that that championship, which he should have had, should have had if he wasn't just unlucky because you got to have the talent, you got to have the, the, the speed, you know, you got to have the motivation, you got to have the team behind you. And, you know, I would say sometimes most importantly, you got to have luck. Like look at guys like Canard. Canard could have won a bunch. Bad luck. Bad luck. Sometimes when you have that just string of bad luck, boo, it 
it just takes you out. It just takes you out, which is which is sad. So now he's going to come from an underdog scenario if he continues to race, if he decides that he still wants to do this. Because he probably doesn't have to do this. He could go the route of Ricky Carmichael. He could go the route of Ryan Dungey. You know, he could be making something. He could go the route of uh, Ryan Hughes and start teaching some people like AJ. You know, there's so many avenues that he could do that he could still make money in the sport. He could go the route of LaRocco and, you know, make, be a team manager. I mean, there's, again, so many avenues. So I I said I wasn't going to digress and look at me digressing, but this was a candid video. Let me know and See you in the comments, bro.